Okay, to introduce the concept of the derivative, I'm going to start with a real simple model here. I've got a car that travels at a steady speed, and its distances uh, and times, I should put and here, times, are shown in the T table below. And what we have is time in hours and distance in miles. And it's like an odometer at zero times zero. We haven't gone anywhere. If you push a little button on your odometer, you know when you're going to do your travel odometer, it starts at zero. But after one hour, you've gone 50 miles, and after two hours, the car has gone 100 miles, three hours, 150, and five hours, 250 miles. Very simple little model here. I've got it over here. I've got it plotted here. This is time, and this is distance, and I've got the points. And as you can see, they line right up, right? That makes life pretty easy, because what we have here is a line, okay? Now, we know everything about lines, and I'm going to get a model for the distance in terms of time, and I'm going to erase this so I can have some room here. I'm just going to put the t-tables essentially here, and I can pull the points off pretty easily, so I really don't need it anymore. And when we go to find the uh, equation of a line, the first thing we need is we need the slope. So our slope is going to equal distance 2, oops, 2, not squared, minus distance 1 over t2 minus t1, where this used to be y and this used to be x, but we've changed the letters there. So I also need some points, right? So why don't I take as point one, um, oh, I don't know, I could take 1 and 50, all right? Oops, 1 and 50. And for point 2, I guess I'll take uh, 3 and 150. Is that right? 3 and 150. Yeah, there we go. 3 and 150. Okay, so I've got two points, so I can find the slope, and then I, I can find the equation of the line using the point-slope formula which requires a slope in a, a one point. So the slope's not too easy, hard to find. It's just m equals, of course, I just go, um, it's 0 0.2, 150 minus 50 over 3 minus 1, right? Oops, 3 minus 1. Then I end up with 100 over 2, right? Over 2, which is 50. So I have a slope of 50 here, okay? Now that I've, got, I've gone through it, just the typical, how do you find the slope? y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, where the variable names have been changed from d to t instead of y and x. Now, I've, I've, I'll just remember that. I'll give myself some room here. I'll get rid of these points, and I'll put the fact that I have a slope does equal 50. I do have one point, and now I can simply use d equals m times t minus t1 plus d1, right? And so d equals m, which is 50, times t minus uh, t1, which is 1, okay, plus 50. And it's pretty clear that this equals 50t minus 50, minus 50 plus 50, okay? And of course, that just equals 50t. All right, so it equals 50t. That's really nice. So we've got our model, okay? And I'm going to erase this again. You could have stopped it back then. When you go through this, if you need to watch the calculations, you can more slowly. You can just back up the video. And I'm going to use the fact that the distance equals 50 times time. Well, this is kind of a simple little model. You give me a time, like maybe, oh, I don't know, three, three and a half hours. I can multiply that times 50, and I'll tell you how what far the cars travel. You say that... Uh, give me 235 miles, and I can tell you how long it took to travel just by solving for t, a very simple little linear uh, example here. But then I notice something else. This is just the odometer, right? I'm kind of interested in the speedometer aspect. How fast is the car going? Well, we can see that in five hours, it covers uh, 250 miles, so it's 250 miles in five hours which gives us miles per hour, and we end up with 50 miles per hour. Well, isn't that nice? Not only does our linear model tell us, you know, we can solve things like give me a time, I can tell you the distance, give me the distance, I can tell you how long, but it also gives you the rate of change, and the rate of change of this, how fast the car is going, he's going 50 miles per hour, because it's distance over time, and he's going at a steady rate of 50 miles an hour. The 50 miles an hour is actually what we call a derivative, it's the rate of change of this function. And in the next video, coming right up, we're going to delve into this a little uh, more deeply by getting into functions that are not just lines. Here's our answer.